Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Western Stories, original air dates November 5th, 1955. It's going to be a rendition of The Bear from Romance. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Now, from Hollywood, Romance. Romance, transcribed stories of love and adventure, of excitement and daring do, of conflict and human emotion. This week, a delightful comedy starring John Daner and Virginia Gregg in Anton Chekhov's The Bear. me, ma'am. It's only me and Shorty. Oh, come in, boys, and I can't seem to find my kerchief. It's right there, ma'am, right next to the late lamented mustache cup. Thank you, Luke. Mm-hmm. Didn't mean to interrupt nothing. No, I was only sitting here looking at his picture. Elegant, wasn't he, Shorty? He purely was. Thank you. You both knobby looking yourselves this morning. Mm, you smell good, too. <laughs> Ed P. Node, ma'am. Ed P. Node for slick him no, up. Colonel Roosevelt and his Rough Riders don't have a reunion every day. Have all the boys started for town? Yes, I mean, me and Shorty was fixing to leave ourselves. Now, ma'am, there won't be soul left on the ranch. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to being lonely now. Ma'am, I'm going to speak a little piece now. Ma'am, I've been cook for this outfit ever since poor defunct first owned it. And... Well, ma'am, what you're doing to yourself just ain't right. You're destroying yourself. Now, today's the day to make your heart bust with gladness. It's that pretty. Everybody's out for a good time. Now, you ought to be doing the same. But instead, you squat here in this parlor with the curtains down from one day to the next. You don't pleasure yourself. Never. I reckon it's a whole year since you left the house. I'll never leave the house again. Buck lies in his grave, and this is my grave. We're both dead. No, ma'am. That's just it. You ain't dead. And you can't be gnashing your teeth and wailing and mourning the dear departed forever. It ain't right. Never to see no one, never to pay no calls on nobody. We won't discuss it any further. When Buck died... When Buck died, my heart died. I'll mourn him the rest of my life. Wherever he is, he'll see how much I loved him. Ma'am, won't you please let me harness Blackie for you and drive you to town? Oh! What did I say? Blackie was his favorite. What a rider he was. He looked like part of the horse. Before you leave, give Blackie a lump of sugar. A big lump. Yes, ma'am. Tell him to go away. I won't see anyone. Go tell him, Shorty. Buck, see my tears. See how I forgive you. See how I love you. Please, ma'am, get a hold of yourself. Oh, you can't understand. Why, sure I can. But, ma'am, you got to get the bulge on this. Ma'am, there's a feller says he's just got to see you. Didn't you tell him I see no one? Throw him out. Throw him out. Ma'am, he stands about 18 hands at the shoulder. You have a gun on your hip? He's got two on his and a knife in his boot. Ma'am, allow me to present myself. Stephen Gregory, owner of the Bar Circle Y. I'm here on a matter of the greatest importance. What is it you want? Your late husband died $1,200 in debt to me. The interest on the mortgage on my place is due tomorrow. I'd like you to pay me the money today. $1,200? What for? Well, partly for oats bought and delivered, and the other 1150 piled up, cutting for high cards. If my husband died in debt to you... Well, I have his IOU. If he and... owed you money, you'll be paid. But not today. I won't have a large enough sum in the bank until the day after tomorrow, so I cannot oblige you this morning. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm in no condition to give financial matters my attention. Yeah, and I'm in a condition which, if I don't pay off that mortgage, will oblige me to blow out my brains. 
They'll take my ranch. You'll get your money the day after tomorrow. I, I don't want it the day after tomorrow. I want it today. You'll have to excuse me. I can't pay you. You'll have to excuse me. I insist that you pay me. If I can't, I can't. Is that final? That's final. Absolutely. Positively. Gracias. Muchas gracias. And everyone wants to know why I can't keep my temper. I'll thank you to leave now. Look, I need money. I spent all day yesterday riding from one deadbeat to another. They owe me a fortune. I can't collect a penny. Will you get out of here? I'm tuckered out. I'm 70 miles from home. I slept in a saloon last night with a brandy keg for a pillow. I finally come here. It's my last hope. And what do I get? I'm in no condition to give financial matters my attention. Why shouldn't I be in an uproar? Shorty, go after the boys, quick. Fetch them back. Now, sir, will you leave or will you stay here bullying a woman and a widow until my hands return and give you your just desert? Well, is it my fault you're a woman? Is it my fault you're a widow? Do I have to pay off my mortgage or don't I? What do you expect me to do when my creditors come? Just strip down to my long johns and pretend I'm a ghost? Look, don't just stand there. Mister? I go to Tim Reed and I break his nose. Still, he won't pay. I beg Henry Dawson with a two before and he won't pay. And you... You're in no condition to give financial matters your attention. Not one of you pays up just because I'm too gentle with you. Just because I'm wax in your hands. Now, mister... You shut up! Now, I tell you this, ma'am. If you think that you can diddle me out of my money just because I'm a gentleman, you think again. The picture has gone to the well once too often. Sir, I have never diddled anyone. And I am not accustomed to being addressed in that tone of voice. I have been as patient as I can, but my patience is at an end. Good day. I come here to be paid, and I will be paid. Is it warm in here? I'm so mad I'm dying of heat. Why are the windows closed? Why are the curtains drawn? A little air in here. I get so worked up when people shove me around, take advantage of my good nature, and treat me like I had no feelings. I'd rather try to reason with a mule than a woman. A mule will meet you part way. A mule's a miracle of logic compared to a woman. I can't abide women. I get mad even when I see one from a distance. Where is she? Well, she's stretched out, most likely. She ain't used to seeing folks. She's been poorly. Oh, has she? Ever since Buck died. Yeah, well, she's not putting anything over on me. You hear me? Wherever you are, you're not putting anything over on me with those dimples and those bright eyes and those widow's weeps. I can't be diddled. I've been around... I've seen the elephant and heard the owl. Please, mister, she's so low in spirits. So am I low in spirits. I'll match my spirits against hers any time for lowness. Fine hospitality, I must say. Yeah, gorgeous hospitality. In the middle of a conversation, she stalks out like a turkey hen. Sir, I have grown unaccustomed of late to the sound of a man's voice in this house, and I can't stand shouting. I must ask you to go and leave me in peace. Pay me my money and I'll go. Who drew those curtains? Who opened this window? I opened the window. I drew the curtains. You expect me to sit in the dark with no air? Am I a gopher? Answer me that. I need to breathe. How dare you? Shut that window. Stand aside, sir. And people ask me why I get angry. You get out of my way. You hooligan! You bear! break that window. Don't, don't try to change the subject. I'm not here to talk about windows. I'm here to get paid. I don't have the money now. Then I'll sit here and wait until you do. Please, I'm not well. Neither am I, after all the pops call I had last night. But I'm going to sit here till I get paid anyway. You can be sick for a week if you like. All right, then I'll sit here for a week. If you're sick for a year, I'll sit here for a year. You're not putting anything over on me with those widow's weeps and those bright eyes and those dimples. I know those dimples. Now maybe you'll understand that I won't be diddled. You bear! You bear! You bear! We'll return to romance in just a moment. When law enforcement is weak, tempers are strong. In the pioneer days, when one man was the law west of the Great Divide, the temptation to break the law was irresistible to many. That's what made the job of the U.S. Marshals so difficult in early days. 
That's what makes CBS Radio's Gunsmoke so fascinating, both Saturday daytimes and Sunday nights on most of these stations. And now for the second act of Romance. Of my house. As soon as I'm paid. $1,200 you owe me so I can meet my mortgage. Don't tomorrow. raise your voice to me. How dare you behave like this to a woman? But do you call it etiquette to criticize a guest in your own parlor? And I behave very well to a woman. Oh, no, you don't. You have no manners. No. You're an uncouth man. Oh. Decent men don't talk to a woman like that. Oh, what a business. Well, how do you want me to talk to you? Like like an Englishman, huh? Oh, my God, yeah, lady. What ripping with ah, What, what, what? And how well you look in mourning. I say... That's oh. stupid and rude. Ah, I don't know how to behave to a woman... In my time, ma'am, I've seen more women than you've seen bustles. I've had three shootings on account of women. I've thrown over 12 of them and been turned down by nine. And you don't believe me, it's the truth. There was a time when I mooed after women like a sick calf, almost drowned myself in colony water, chewed sen sen to make my voice soft and my breath sweet, shaved every day, sometimes twice a day. And wore pink silk garters on my shirt sleeves. I'm not at all interested. I made love passionately, madly, softly, loudly, every which way. I suffered. I howled at the moon like a coyote. I sang love songs and whispered sweet nothings, but not anymore. You won't get around me like that now. Get around you? Who wants to get around I've you? I've had a belly full. Soft cheeks, bright eyes, ruby lips, dimples, the moon, dainty hands. I wouldn't give a cow chip for the lot, ma'am. Now, you listen to me. All women, all women, present company accepted. All women, big or small, thin or fat, old or young, are unfaithful, crooked, vicious, malicious, envious, vain, petty, trivial, greedy, shallow, merciless, ruthless, lying, unreasonable, and where brains are concerned, a horny toad can give cards, spades, and little casino to anything in petticoats and still win the game. You! But you... I speak from experience. What do you look at one of these dainty creatures, all silks and laces and gentle smiles and soft sighs, angelic, positively angelic, but when you look into her soul, what do you see? A buzzard. And the most aggravating thing of all, this buzzard, for some reason or other, is convinced that of all the creatures on earth, it and it alone is capable of love. Now, I leave it to you. Getting right down to cases. Have you ever met a woman who can love anything but a lap dog? When she's in love, can she do anything but blubber and slobber? A man suffers. Man, he tears his heart to pieces. A, a man makes sacrifices. And how does she show her love? By fluttering her fan with one hand and getting a good, strong grip on his nose with the other. Ma'am, you have the bad luck to be a woman. You know yourself that's a woman's nature. You tell me the truth. Have you ever seen a woman who was honest, faithful, steadfast? Of course you haven't. You'll find a cow who can play the mandolin before you'll find a steadfast woman. You're quite finished. That's the gist of my remarks, anyway. And as you see it, when it comes to love, who is it that's honest and steadfast? The man? Of course it's the man. The man. Oh, men, honest and steadfast, did you ever? Now you listen to me. I'm going to tell you about men. Where did you ever get the idea that men are faithful in love? I'll tell you about men. I'll tell you about the best man that ever lived, my late husband. I loved that man. I loved him with every part of me, every bone, every drop of blood. I loved him as no other man has been loved before. I, I gave him everything. My youth, the best years of my life, my joy, my property, everything. I, I, I kissed the ground he walked on. I worshipped him. And how did he repay me? He deceived me. There wasn't a day he drew breath that he didn't deceive me. Luke's there. Ask Luke. After he died, I found a whole trunk full of love letters, and when he was alive, it hurts to remember it even now. He'd leave me for weeks at a time, go gallivanting all over the country. And in spite of all that, I loved him and was faithful to him. 
I'm still faithful to him and true to his memory. I haven't stirred from this house since the funeral, and I'll wear mourning for the rest of my life. <laughs> mourning? Do you think that fools me? Don't you think I know why you wear black, why you stay in the house? You want people to say, how spiritual. For love of her husband, she buries herself alive. What sentiment. I'm on to you, ma'am. How dare you? You renounce the flesh and the devil, but you curl your hair and you sprinkle yourself with patchouli. I smell it. How dare you insult me? You keep your voice down. I'm not one of your hired hands. I won't be yelled at. You're the one who's yelling. Now get out of you here. You pay me and I'll go. You won't get a cent. I'm not your husband and I'm not your intended, so don't make a scene. I don't like it. Get up from that chair and get out of this house. That was my husband's chair. Get up from it. Oh, never love this chair. I come on legitimate business and I get insults. There. There's your chair. You broke it. You broke the chair. Charlie. Slim. Chuck. Lenny. There ain't nobody around, ma'am. Shorty's gone to fetch him. Let him come. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get open-handed out. hospitality. You're a hooligan. You're a roughneck. You're a monster. You're a bear. What did you call me? A bear. A monster. A bear. What right have you got to call me names? I'll call you as many names as I want to. Do you think I'm afraid of you? And do you think that you can call me names just because you're a woman? Do you think I let people call me names and take away my dignity without protecting myself? We'll shoot it out. Hold on now. Wait up. With six guns. You're not scaring me one little bit. I wouldn't care if you were twice as big and yelled ten times as loud. We'll shoot it out. Nobody insults me and gets away with it. Bear, I don't bear, care if bear, you are bear, a woman. Bear. Well, now, wait a minute. Who says only men have to pay for insults? Who made that rule? Women are always screaming about equal rights, all right? Let's have equal rights all around in everything. We'll shoot it out. Good. With six guns. And right now. Right now. I'll get my husband's gun. You wait right here. I'm going to enjoy pumping bullets into your thick skull. Right between the eyes. Right between the eyes. I'll bring her down like a chick. Man, woman, it's all the same to me when I'm insulted. Oh, now, mister, please don't do this awful thing. Leave now before it's too late. Let it go with scaring her. Don't shoot her. If she wants to fight. Well, that's emancipation. That's equal rights. Oh, mister. In matters like this, I support the new woman. I'll shoot her on principle. Oh. But, but isn't she a heller, though? Isn't she a lot of woman? You see the way she galloped off for a gun, head up and tail over the dashboard? I'll enjoy putting a bullet in your skull. Did you hear her, huh? And how her eyes sparkled. Why, she didn't back down an inch. Now, please, go away She's now. a real woman. That's the kind I like. A real womanly woman. Not a drooping sack of marshmallow, but with blood in her veins. All fire. All pepper. All gunpowder. A Roman candle. You shame to kill her. Oh, no, no. You man. know, I like her. I positively like her. Dimples and all. I like her. I'd be willing to tear up those IOUs. And I'm feeling serene again. I got a grip on my temper. She's a womanly woman. All right, now. But before we start, you'll have to show me how to use it. I've never held a gun in my hands now, before. Now, ma'am, ma don't you act hasty. I'm going right down the road and I'm going to try to find the boys. And please, ma'am, you just play for time. Here's a fine weapon, ma'am. Good balance, nice heft to it. It's as shiny as your eyes. Nothing as pretty as a Colt forty-five. Just show me how to hold it. Well, the butt goes into your palm like this, and you can either pull the trigger with your pretty little finger or flick the hammer with your tiny little thumb. Like that? Yeah, just like that. And uh, in aiming it... Uh, here, stand in front of me. In aiming it, you put your head back a little and... Uh, Hold your arm out like this. That's it. And when you're ready, you fire. You just squeeze the trigger. You squeeze. Don't pull. Squeeze. Like a lemon, you know. Here, well, give me your hand. Now, you feel how gentle I squeeze? I just squeeze it gentle. You see? Just like this. I understand. Well, I'm ready. Where do we shoot it out? In the yard? All right. Let's go. But I'm telling you in advance, I'm going to fire in the air. Well, if that isn't the... Why? Well, because... That's, that's my business. You're not yellow, are you? Are you? I'm not going to let you crawl out of this. You come with me. I won't rest easy till I've put a bullet in your head. Well, are you coming? Are you scared? 
Yes, I'm scared. You're a liar. Why won't you fight? Well, because... Because I like you. He likes me. He has the nerve to say he likes me. Come on, into the yard. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me load your gun. And give it to me. Listen. Are you still mad? I'm a little mad, too, but... You know what I mean? I can't find the words to... Well, the fact is... Uh, it's like this. Can I help it if I like you? Do you understand? It, it's, it's all I can do to keep from telling you I love you. Don't come near me. I hate you. Oh, what a woman. I've never seen one like her. I'm a gone goose. I'm done for. I'm a mouse in a trap. You get away from me or I'll shoot. Then shoot. I'd enjoy being killed by a gun held in that soft little hand. Well, you're driving me crazy. Now, don't, don't talk without thinking. And make up your mind right now, because if I once leave this house, you'll never see hide nor hair of me again. Make up your mind. I'm a rancher. I'm respected in the community. I have 8,000 head of cattle, and I can throw six whiskey glasses into the air and pulverize them before they hit the ground. I own the fastest horse in the county. Will you marry me? I want to shoot it out. Now, let's shoot it out. <laughs> I'm out of my mind. I, I'm in love like a boy. I'm happy as a jaybird. I love you. Get up. Get off your knees. Let go of my hand. I love you as I never loved before. I've thrown over 12 women. I, I, I've been turned down by nine, but I never loved any of them as I love you. I, I'm putty. I'm taffy. I, I'm wax. I offer you my hand, my heart, my fortune, and my life. Oh, shame on me. Shame on me. I'm mortified as I've never been. I, I haven't been in love for years. I took an oath and... And suddenly I'm in love, like a wolf in a trap. Marry me? Yes or no? You refuse? All right, then. Wait! Well? Nothing. Get out of my house. No, stop. No, go away. I hate you. I mean, no, don't go away. Oh, my head's spinning. I I'm angry. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out. Get out. Goodbye. 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 Where are you going? Stop. No, don't come near me. No, no, now stay away from me. I hate myself for this. Falling in love on my knees like a schoolboy. I love you. Do you think I want to love you? But I love you. It's the last thing I intended. Tomorrow I have to pay off my mortgage and start my roundup, and here you go ahead. I'll never forgive myself for this. Take your hands away. You get away from me. Let's shoot it out. Let's shoot it. Ma'am? Ma'am? Oh, be ready to shoot, boys. Be ready. Ma'am, I... I just don't believe it. <sighs> Luke? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Never mind feeding Blackie that lump of sugar. Romance is produced and directed by William Frug. The Bear by Anton Chekhov was especially adapted for radio by Walter Brown Newman, starring John Daner and Virginia Gregg with Larry Dobkin and Harry Bartell. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to hear Romance, transcribed next week at this same time. Tonight on CBS Radio, Eugene Ormandy conducts the Philadelphia Orchestra. One of the world's foremost musical companies offers an all Sibelius program of music. Remember this evening and each Saturday evening on most of these same stations, CBS Radio is proud to bring to your homes the Philadelphia Orchestra. Stay tuned now for Gunsmoke, which follows immediately over most of these same stations.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.